This is an introduction to the reactive programming language cell. Let's start with a simple example. I will write here a loop that awaits one second and then prints the famous message and restarts. If I compile here, it complains that the printf function is not declared. In cell, we can call any C function just by prefixing its name with an underscore. But we need to tell the compiler that we want to use this function. So now it should compile and we can run the program here. So you see that every second we print the message. This is the reactive reload world. So how it works? We enter the loop and we, we immediately await one second. In this point, this line of execution suspends and gives the control back to the environment. The environment plays an important role in a reactive language because it is responsible for issuing events to the application. Here we are reacting to time, but we can also react to mouse clicks, key presses, and so on. When the program reaches this await statement, it suspends, and only after the referred event occurs that the program resumes, and in this case prints the message, and loops again to await again one second, and it stays forever in this loop. See here that it is still printing the message every second. Cell supports multiple lines of execution. This way we can await for multiple events at the same time. Let's change this example to run two trails in parallel. So this one and I will copy here and this other one. Uh, I'll change here to print hello and here print word and put another line break. If we compile this we see again the message printed on the screen. Now we have the parallel statement and this variation here the end parallel end says that the two trails need to terminate to terminate the whole composition. So after one second elapses, I print hello, I also print word, both trails terminate, so I loop and restart the parallel statement. That's why we are seeing here every second both messages printed on screen. An important thing here is that you can see that the order is always the same. I always print hello and then I print word. It's not the other way around. Cell is a synchronous language and in a synchronous language all lines of execution advance together. As they are reacting to the same event, the scheduler, which is deterministic, always executes the trail that appears first in the, the code. So in this case, it will always print hello before printing word. If we make a very small modification here, I want to sleep one second plus one microsecond. Let's see what happens. Now you see that the hello, the word appears before hello. 
So now the scheduler will always execute this one first because one second must occur before one second and one microsecond and it will print this before this and then both trails terminate and I can restart the loop and do the same again so you see here that the world appears first uh, another modification here I will wait 100 milliseconds but 10 times 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 so this is 10 times 100 milliseconds that is exactly 1 second now we have the first behavior again so another thing that is important is that the internal timings for the control statements, uh, see calls, assignments, whatever, they are ignored by the runtime. Only what matters are the await statements. So here if it says that I'm awaiting in total one second, this is less or equal to this other one second here and then this message must be printed before the second message so this is important because it provides a simpler reasoning about time we don't need to care uh, how long this statement takes or how long uh, the splitting into two trails takes we only care about what we are awaiting in the program so I can even rewrite this as a loop that runs 10 times and then just clear this here and maybe here I will be 100 times or 1000 times await 1 millisecond I still have the same behavior it's always deterministic again if I modify here and after this time I wait one microsecond now the word appears first so this, this scheduler is very precise about these await statements. That's all you need to care about uh, timing issues in the program. Let's go back to the simpler example here that prints hello world. And I will now introduce internal events. So I can declare a, an event that can be used internally by the application. So for example, here instead of awaiting one second, I will await this event E that I just declared. And here, after printing hello, I will emit this event. So let's see here. Again, I have the hello world behavior. What is happening here is that when the program starts I run these two trails, the first awaits one second and the second awaits the internal event E. Then uh, this is an internal event, only the program can emit, so only this trail can awake after one second. So it prints hello and then it emits the event E. This emission is broadcast to all active trails. In this case, only the second trail is, is awaiting the event. So it awakes, prints 
the message world. Both trails terminate. Remember that we are inside a parallel end, so the composition also terminates and we restart the behavior. To illustrate broadcast emission, let's create here a third trail. This trail also awaits E. Let's write a different string here and see the behavior. Now you see hello big word. So when I emit the event here, both trails awake. So because the scheduler is deterministic, this trail always awakes first and then this one. One last thing about internal events is that they follow a stacked execution. So let's change here. I will print word after the emission of the event. And here, write another word. Let's see. Now you see that I first print hello, then I emit the event E, but this continuation is stacked. So before I continue to execute here, I first await the two trails that are awaiting E. So I print hello, then big, then happy, then now all trails reacted to the emitted event, so I can now pop this continuation and finally print world. Then the three trails terminate and I restart the loop. Let's go back again. for the hello world and now I will change the parallel end for parallel or let's see the behavior now hello 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 so now this trail never executes what is happening here the or parallel says that when any of the trails terminate then the whole composition must terminate immediately so in this case when I awake here I print the hello message and this trail terminates so before the second trail even resumes the whole composition terminates and the second trail is killed and then we restart the loop and we do this over and over the power is very convenient when we want to run a trail for a while. Let's invert here. I just want to run this loop. Now I will print the message in a single string and in parallel I will await five seconds and then I will print end. And I will return here to the operating system. Now you see that we printed exactly 
five times the message hello world then we printed end and finally the program terminates so when we start we start awaiting here and here so one second print two seconds print three four five seconds this one is still executes first so it will print hello world for the fifth time but then this trail also awakes then it prints end and terminates this trail because we are inside a parallel or the first trail is killed and we finish this whole composition here so we go to the last statement that returns to the operating system.